All right, 1.30. Hope everyone had a nice break, maybe some nice lunch there. Uh, we are ready to kick off the next session. Session four, audience targeting and effective ad copy with Jenny. Jenny, take it away. All right, wonderful. Okay, you guys, just going to set up screen share here. Very excited to dive into audience targeting and effective ad copy. I feel like this is a topic that's come up for us repeatedly here today. Uh, I would say, I'm going to make a claim and say that most ads, most people who come to me that need assistance with ads, um, they're, you know, they're frustrated because they can't figure out why, why aren't their ads working? They know that their offer is good. It ends up being because they're uh, their ad copy isn't good. So we're diving into that here today in this session. It's just a very, very important piece of the puzzle. Um, audience targeting is important, but truly, if your message isn't resonating with people, they're not going to click and open your ad. So <clears throat> um, before we begin, I'm just going to start with a quick little case study, something that kind of just came to mind off the top of my head right now as we're beginning. I started for a client uh, just a couple weeks ago. They had uh, someone internally running ads and I think their cost per sign up was it was around $225 to get people to sign up for this free offer that they had. That's insane. It should never cost you that much money to get someone to sign up for something free. However, what I did is I literally took their exact same ad, I reworded it, and within a week we were able to get it down to $10 to get someone to sign up for it. Literally everything else in the ad stayed the same and the client came to me and they're like, "Why was this costing us a couple hundred dollars every time to get someone to sign up?" And I told them I literally had your same ad. I just simply said something different in the ad. So that just shows the power of messaging and how much money it truly can save you. So let us dive right on in here. Okay, so for this session, um, this is obviously a live session here. At the end, I would love to take uh, real life examples from you guys. I did have a couple people shoot me emails uh, wanting to audit and go through a couple items, which I will include here. Uh, but also if you guys wanna save any questions that you have for the end, um, I'm happy to audit any ad copy that you may have written uh, and talk about any kind of audience targeting questions you have. So let's get started. Interest-based targeting. Our interest-based targeting, so this is what we call our cold targeting. This would be people top of funnel that you're looking to reach. Uh, before we go ahead and inputting anything into Ads Manager, what I want you to think about is who are you looking to reach? What type of content are they consuming online? Are there certain blogs, news, news sources, uh, you know, other media that they might be consuming online? That would be a very, um, just a place that you know that you can reach them. If so, we could probably use that for targeting. Uh, and also, what do they do online? Are they shoppers? Are they people watching videos? These are all, again, interest-based targeting that we can use inside of Ads Manager. <clears throat> all right, other targeting. So we can target email lists. I showed you guys that earlier today. We can target those who have engaged with us on social media, uh, whether it be Facebook or Instagram, even people who have watched videos or more than half of our videos. That's a really powerful type of audience, too, is targeting people who not only view just a couple seconds, but people who have watched a large amount of the content you put out. We can retarget to website visitors, people who maybe abandoned their cart, and also lookalike audiences. <clears throat> Excuse me, these are probably my favorite type of audiences because they do really well. They will just do well. If you give, oh, and actually, I think my next slide here. Yeah, let's go ahead and talk about what a lookalike audience is. So let's say you are someone who is a service provider. You've got a list of the clients that you've served in the past or people who have maybe signed up for an email list or purchased something from you. What you can do is actually give that email list to Facebook. And what they're going to do is based on, they're going to collect as much information as they have on those people who have opted into tracking. And then what they'll do is create an audience that's likely to perform similarly. So what I strongly recommend you think about is, you know, what is your strongest audience that you have? Because we could do a lookalike to purchasers. We could do a lookalike to people who have um, submitted a form on your website. Maybe you don't have anything like that. Maybe you're like, Jenny, I've had a few people purchase from me, but that's obviously not enough to make a huge impact. Well, we can also even do a lookalike to website visitors, a lookalike to people who engage with you online. Those are all absolutely plausible audiences, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and audiences that we could use to create our lookalike audience. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually pull up in my ads manager and just show you guys where we create these audiences. And then we're going to dive into um, the personas and how you decide what kind of what kind of targeting you should be doing. <clears throat> excuse me. Okay. 
I'm going to drag my screen on over here. Um, while I'm doing this, I just wanted to mention to you all as well that I have a bunch of uh, free resources on my website, and I've seen a number of you people have actually already started checking them out, which I love seeing. Uh, make sure that after this presentation, if you want more tips on this or anything else, just go ahead, head on over to the website. I'm a, a wealth of information. I love um, putting out tutorials and videos and whatnot regarding this. So there's there's more info on audience targeting there. <coughs> so sorry. Uh, a lot more talking today than I normally do. So what we're going to do is run through where you can create these audiences. There are a couple different places where you can make them. First, I can go to my menu, drop this on down, head to audiences. That's one place to do it. Another place to do it is when you are actually at the ad set level. You guys saw that earlier today. Ad set level is where we're setting those audiences up. <clears throat> if you scroll on down here. All right, here we are audience section. Okay. So first, what you're going to do is, well, I should say, if you're doing an interest-based audience, interest means that you're typing in things such as, you saw me earlier today doing it, when I was trying to reach entrepreneurs, I was typing in entrepreneurship, small businesses. Uh, you know, if even if you're looking to reach parents, you know, you can specify if you're looking what is it not catching up with me? There we are. Um, you can reach parents. You can, I mean, the, the, Options here are endless in regards to who you can reach. We're going to dive into that on some of the future slides, but just know that anything that's interest-based, you're finding it here. Again, if you need inspiration, click on browse and you can see all different types of demographic information, interest information, behavior. So this is even, you know, like if they have an anniversary coming up, if they are someone who's interested in politics, or maybe they're an avid online shopper, maybe there's someone who should see your ads. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that is where we do our interest-based targeting. Again, you can click save this audience after you create it to use it in future ads quite easily if you end up really liking it or if it does well. But I want to dive into some of the more technical audiences. So if you click on create new, you can do create new custom audience or create new lookalike audience. Custom audiences. So these are people who have interacted with your business already. So like I said, could be people who have visited your website, Customer list are people on your email list. Uh, offline activity, this one I don't like using as much. I've also found it to be not super effective with the iOS 14 updates. Essentially what you can do is you can uh, get a list of people who have maybe come into, like if you have a brick and mortar, um, you can upload that information here and create a lookalike to that. I just haven't found it to be as useful. <clears throat> We were talking a lot about videos. You know how I said you can target people who have watched certain videos. Take a look at this. So you can target, all I did there again, is I simply clicked on video. And then what you can end up doing here is choosing engagement, choose content type. So this is where we can say people who have watched 50% of your video. Okay, great. Within the last 365 days, this is where you click which video specifically. So let's say I don't put a lot of, <laughs> I don't put a lot of video content out on my page here. Let's just take this one, for example. So if I wanted to target people who watch this video that I created, uh, then I go ahead and I can just say from the past 365 days, you could limit it to any window that makes sense, but just know that this is how you'd go about creating that. If you had more videos, you could go ahead and select all these different videos. So it doesn't have to just be one, but think of how powerful this is. If you had something that you posted on Facebook, on Instagram, it went viral. Or let's say you have one and you just, uh, you, you continually get views on it, even though you don't advertise it. That would be really good content to, to create a lookalike audience off of because you know that people are interested in it because it has that organic attraction. So just know if you ever want to create that video engagement, that lives right here. So we could also do uh, create an audience based on people who have interacted with our Instagram account. So maybe you want to reach people who follow you uh, with a certain message, or maybe people who have, watch, I'll show you. You can even do, so you can do people who have engaged with you. You can do even more specific. You can break it down if this will let me. Okay. So anyone who has sent you a message, anybody who has saved your post, if you're someone who's active on social, I want you to think about that. Those who saved your post, that's golden, right? Like those are your people. Those are people who find the content that you're producing to be extremely valuable. And again, you can create an audience of just those people, which is really, really neat. So anyway, I encourage you to check all these out. You can hover on over it. Uh, it'll tell you a little bit more. Even think if you have an actual event and people have gotten tickets, you can create an audience based on that. 
So, so this is essentially, these are different forms of retargeting, but we can actually even use this to create that lookalike audience I was talking about. So let's say, for example, you do have uh, some website activities such as, all right, so on my website with the pixels pulling open is that I typically have people viewing page, initiating checkout, adding to cart. I'd like a couple guides for sale on my website. So uh, I could create an audience of people. Let's see. Because I'm sharing my screen, it's not letting me scroll all the way down. But like, let's say I wanted to create a lookalike based on people who have purchased. So that's telling Facebook, hey, these are my most valuable people. These are people who are willing to spend some money to get a Facebook ad guide. And I want to create an audience that's likely to perform similarly. So they'll recognize that these are small business owners. Maybe they are people who are into social media marketing or they work for an agency, but they want to learn more. Facebook will be able to pick up on exactly who's on my list. It sounds kind of crazy. It sounds kind of creepy, but that's that's what iOS 14 is about. Out, right? Like opting out of that tracking if you don't want that. Um, but for those who are okay being tracked, so they are served personalized ads. It's, it's helpful in this sense. So anyway, let's just say I want to create an audience of people who have added to cart in the last 30 days. I can call this add to cart 30 days. So what I'll do is click create that audience. And then Facebook will ask me, do you want to create a lookalike? So it's literally that easy. You have to create that custom audience first. So again, if it's your list of people who have engaged with you, purchased from you, email list, et cetera, and then you can click on create the lookalike. So when we're creating a lookalike, what you need to do is tell it which country uh, we're targeting. So keep in mind, you don't have to just target the United States. You could target literally anywhere that would be relevant. I had to choose my source, it auto-populated it, but if you ever aren't finding what you're looking for here, just click on other sources and you can see all of the custom audiences you might've made. All right, picky here. <laughs> okay, so then down here is where it's asking us how many lookalike audiences do you want? I recommend making at least a few. Uh, so you can make one, two, three, four, five, up to six lookalike audiences. Let me show you what this looks like. So. Why do you need more than one lookalike? It's telling you about how big they're estimating each of these to be. So if it's a 1% lookalike based on my uh, based on my add to cart, people who have added to cart on my website, they're estimating it to be about 2.7 million people. Uh, and the smaller the lookalike, typically the more the most they're the most relevant people. As we get larger, Facebook's casting that net wider, there's a chance that maybe it won't be as relevant. Like I don't ever really use like a 10% lookalike. Because as you can see, it says that that has 22 million people in it. That's way too many people for me to be targeting. And I imagine it just wouldn't be as relevant anymore. So anyway, I'm typically toggling between like 6%, like somewhere between zero and 6%. So you can make it as large or small as you'd like. And I mean, in fact, you could even, you know, you can make each of these a 2.7 million size and then just add them on top of each other because you can target more than one audience at once. So when I'm selecting my audience, well, let me just show you when I'm selecting my audience, I could absolutely choose more than one of these if I wanted it to be a little bit beefier. Uh, one question I get asked is like, how do you know which one to use? Well, the answer is it's it's completely up to you. And I, I change it out, but not too frequently. Uh, if you see that over time, your frequency is increasing, meaning if people are seeing this ad too many times, you might see kind of like a different performance. That might be an indication that you want to try one of your other lookalikes. But uh, I'm generally keeping with the same ones. Maybe, maybe after a year, it feels a little bit saturated, but I don't putz around with it too much. I want to show you guys here that, did you see I created all of those, what, the six different groups? And you see how they all just, they all just stacked here. So right now I am targeting every single person from the zero all the way up to the, the 5%. So I can remove, like, I don't feel the need to try my three to four yet. I might just stick with a, maybe a one and a one to 2%, but you can see that it's, it's stacking and I'll be targeting uh, both groups of these people. I do want you to take a look over here on the right hand side. This is nothing to panic about, but you'll probably see, look, it tells me nothing regarding my audience size. And it says I'm going to reach less than 10 people. That's not true. Facebook, uh, Facebook can sometimes send messages here that are a little bit alarming and it's, it's not the truth. Uh, in fact, what's happening is this audience is still my lookalike audience, it's still populating. Facebook's working on generating this lookalike right now. And that's why there's no information regarding how many, and that's why they're saying less than 10 people because they don't want to overestimate. So don't worry about that if, uh, if that's of concern to you. Okay, great. So 
Uh, let me just make sure I did not miss any of our important ones. So email list, engage on social, retarget, lookalike. So I hope that made it clear here. So again, one more time, I'll run through this because I know that this can be a lot if you haven't created these kind of audiences before. I made it within the ad set level. Let me show you how, if you wanna do it the other way, you can open up the menu and just click on audiences. Sometimes I like to make the audiences ahead of time so that when I come into ads manager, I'm like, okay, I'm simply creating an ad. I'm not here trying to figure out who I'm targeting, what I'm doing. Sometimes I like to set these up ahead of time. So if you come in here, it's the same deal, create custom. So that is where we are doing uh, an email list, website visitors, people who've engaged with us on social, any kind of retargeting happens here. Reminder that lookalike audience. So this is where we're going ahead and creating a lookalike based on one of the custom audiences we created. Special ad audience. So this is for those special ad categories such as housing, employment, political issues, things like that. And saved is what they call just the regular cold interest-based targeting where you're uh, targeting like demographic information. Okay. Um, so the next part of this session here, we are diving into messaging. So let me just make sure. Okay, yeah. So before we get into ad copy and messaging, let me just quick take a pause and ask what questions you all have regarding uh, audience targeting right now. Go ahead and drop, drop any questions that you all have for me. Actually, I, I can think of one question that might be going through some of Looking here. Okay, so one question that I often get asked is how many audiences should we be trying? How many audiences should we be testing? Uh, I recommend testing out at least two audiences at a time. You are probably going to want to go with a lookalike audience, and then I would recommend a cold just regular interest-based audience. Generally for my clients, I'm testing at least three or four, but to start with, test out two, absolutely, so that you can at least determine, okay, was it the look like to people who have submitted a form that were top performers, or was it people who, you know, uh, consider themselves to be small business owners? Any other questions that you guys have before we get into messaging? Okay. And Andy, can you confirm too that it's uh, it's enabled? Yep, Q and A is working. Okay, perfect. Yep. All right, you guys. So let's go ahead and jump into audience messaging. Like I said, this is like one of my favorite favorite parts about ads because it makes or breaks the effectiveness of our ads. Okay, so writing effective ad copy. Before I sit down and do any kind of copywriting for my clients, I first sit down with them and I ask them about who we're looking to reach, who their ideal customer is. I'm sure you guys hear this all the time. Okay, who's your ideal customer? But I want you to dig further than that. I don't want to just know that, you know, you're looking to reach, you know, people between the ages of 25 and 65 who are interested in X, Y, and Z. I want to dig deeper than that because that's what you need to do in order for these ads to actually hit home to people. That's one of the biggest things too from this past year I've learned is with iOS 14, you know, we used to see all this information about people and now it's shrunk down. Our messaging also needs to reflect that. It needs to be so very sp specific and speak to the person we're looking to reach. So I want you to think about uh, who are these people? What problem are they struggling with? What pain point does your product or service address? Let's dive into some examples of what this looks like. So I call this persona messaging. So let's see. Okay, so first I'm taking uh, one of my clients brands and this looks totally blurry when it's blown up here but you guys can at least get the idea. So one of my clients in particular, I'm just gonna keep using them because it's who I introduced earlier in the day. So you guys are familiar with one of my clients that is a mama baby brand. Now, when I met with them years ago, when we started together, they're like, okay, we're looking to reach young mothers. I'm like, no, 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 no. Tell me more about these young mothers because you have the young mother that is uh, empowered. They're excited about their pregnancy. They're going to be documenting everything. They're going to be the ones with those Instagram worthy photos. You might also have a completely overwhelmed mom. You might also have a mother who 
really, really needs like they they're uh, they love keeping their house neat and clean. And they really want to continue doing that. That's important to them. You know, there are so many different types of moms, right? Like you can say, mother under the age of 40, but uh, we need to look deeper into that. So I want to I want to talk to you guys about this client, one of the types of mothers that we have for them, the sentimental mom. So these are the moms, they're posting on social every day, you know, these mothers, right? They're posting on social every day, they're showing every moment about their about their child. Some of it you care about some of it you don't care about, but you guys get it. They're kind of like our overshares, right? So what's the problem that Blossom and Pear, my client, can solve for them? Well, one of the really awesome things about Blossom and Pear is they sell products that document all moments. It's not just the special moments, the my first birthday. It's like they, they have products that help you document things uh, that others might not even care about. But as a mother and your child being the center of your world, this sentimental mom, oh, they love that. So anyway, the problem that my client's solving here is uh, documenting all moments, even the everyday moments, even the mundane moments. What does this kind of mother need or want? They want something timeless and beautiful for their memories. Um, I don't know if, here we go. So uh, this is a carousel ad here and it just swipes through some of their most popular products. Uh, ad copy we have is the small moments that may not have significance to others and yet mean the world to you. Shop our beautiful heirloom pieces at whatever. So you guys can see here, really focusing in on this mother who wants something just to document all of those special little moments again, even if they're not special to others. Okay, example number two. So here's an example of, we could literally be selling the same product. This is a different product, but you could literally be selling the same product, but you need to think of the other, the other angle. So one thing I was thinking about for this client was the practical mom. So practical mom, uh, you know, the problem that they're solving, and this is, uh, they call these pram liners. So this is like a little stroller liner. It's cute. It's washable, uh, you know, can wipe off mess easily. So anyway, when we were talking through the launch of this product, we were talking about who this is directed towards. And they're like, well, this is for a practical mom. So the problem that they're solving is children are messy, right? Children smash graham crackers, granola bars, fruit snacks, speaking from experience here, my children are very messy people. Uh, and I, I would totally fall into the practical mom category of I need and want something that I can just take that off, throw it in the wash, wipe it down, hose it down, whatever it might be. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. That's definitely something that appeals to me. But the bigger thing is that I want an easy way to clean up that mess. So when we're creating ad copy specific to this pram liner, it's going to be, you know, and if we're looking to reach the practical mom, that verbiage needs to be very specific to the practical mom. All right. So something I want to just let you guys in on is there are a few key tips that will, some of these could get your ads disapproved. Some of these will hurt the ad performance. So these are really important tips for you guys to have. First, the ad copy should match the landing page. What I mean by that is what you're saying in your ad, I literally don't be afraid to verbatim have that exact same verbiage on the actual landing page. Why? Facebook wants to see the relevance. They want to see that when someone clicks on the ad, they know exactly what's going to happen when they make it to your website. Uh, it's, it's extremely important to do this. Another one, no use. <laughs> what I mean by this is when you are creating ad copy, avoid using the word you whenever possible. Reason for this is kind of the next point here is they don't like us calling out personal attributes of people. So what this looks like, what it looks like using you versus not using you. Uh, I found this to be most tricky with my clients who are maybe in any kind of like medical field, skincare field, things like that. It's, it is sometimes tricky uh, to, to not call out the attributes. Uh, so like, let's say in the medical field, you are selling maybe, uh, I'm just making this up here. How about a drink supplement? Um, that's like an energizing drink supplement. You don't want to say, are you tired and exhausted? You want our product, blah, 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 blah. So are you tired? Are you tired waking up, you know, exhausted every morning? Uh, that would probably get the ad flagged and shut down, or it's not going to do well. A better way of rephrasing that would be 75% of Americans are uh, chronically tired and don't even realize it or, you know, wh whatever it might be. Again, I'm just making this up, but you see how I kind of spend it into like a statement or a fact. So, you know, majority of Americans are tired when waking up. Our product is boom, 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 boom. Here are the benefits. So that would be a better way of going about it rather than saying you are tired <laughs> and, and we know it. Uh, you just want to avoid calling out those attributes and instead 
like I said, I like thinking of things as like a, a statement rather than a question to them. Let them know like, hey, we see you, but I'm also not going to call you out, <laughs> but but we're addressing uh, your problems and your pain points. And I don't mean problems in a bad way, but kind of just like I was saying here before is, you know, what is the problem that you're solving? All right, last but not least, mentioned this earlier today, but there are some prohibitive items, um, alcohol, serving any kind of ad that contains alcohol, even in a picture to minors, not allowed. Um, weapons also get flagged, gambling gets flagged. Uh, anyway, I have a whole article linked here. Again, as Andy has been mentioning, this uh, presentation is available in Podia, so you guys can click through and read all about the things that you shouldn't be advertising. Uh, I, I generally don't have an issue. I've yeah, I, I typically don't have an issue at all. I have one client who uh, they run a museum for a national park. And anyway, they're like within some of the like art displays they have, there's like a rifle. Well, we've had a problem with that. So just, just note that like, it's not, you, you won't actively get flagged for stuff often, but if there's something like that, oh, there's a slip, we shouldn't have that image in the ad, then um, it will get flagged. Okay, uh, one other item I want to chat through is ad copy options. So you've probably, you know, thought about if you've written ads before, should it be short? Should it be long? Should it be somewhere in between? There's a time and a place for both. I'm typically using pretty short form copy for most of my ads. This is where it's straightforward, it's clear, it's to the point. It's a few sentences or less, sometimes just a couple sentences. We're ending it with a clear call to action. So letting them know shop now at, sign up at, um, book your free consultation at, uh, just making sure that it's again, short, sweet to the point. Now there is a time for long form copy. If you've got some storytelling you need to do, if you have, uh, some testimonials along with some storytelling you want to do, let's see if you are selling a higher ticket item, meaning if it's something, you know, if it's a few hundred dollar investment, maybe that is the time to to list out. This is where it could be multiple paragraphs long. I would just recommend that if you are doing something longer form, use some emojis in there to help break up that ad copy. Because if it's just a few paragraphs, like people aren't, they're not going to sit there and read it. Try some bullet points, try some emojis in there. Uh, and I would also always recommend that you try out a short form and a long form copy because it might surprise you what resonates with others. Uh, when I'm setting up campaigns for my clients, we're always testing out a few audiences, a few personas. So you guys saw me diving into the personas here. When I was talking through this, this isn't even my targeting. This was simply my messaging. So again, I said, when I, when I set up my campaigns, I'm doing campaign and then I'm testing out multiple audiences, but within the audiences is where the messaging is broken down by personas. And then I can even do short and long within the persona. So you can see it's a whole can of worms, all this testing that you can do. You don't have to be overwhelmed by needing to test too many things, but only to say that, uh, the options are limitless and there's, there's constantly testing to be done, which I find to be kind of the fun part of this. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna open it up to questions here. So if you guys have any questions for me, go ahead and drop them in. We still have, let's see here, we still have 30 minutes here. So I would love to run through, if you guys have, any ad copy you want me to run through? If you want to chat through who should I be targeting, what things should I be keeping in mind, drop it in the chat. Like I said, I did have, uh, I've got at least one email from someone who had emailed me ahead of time uh, asking for content they wanted reviewed during the session. So I will be going over that, but you guys uh, go ahead and drop, drop your questions for me. Wonderful. So Melissa says, Canva has all sorts of templates and designs for ads. Do you recommend making your ads look more like regular posts? Uh, that's a great question. It's the only reason I'm hesitating. It's actually one of my sessions. It is the next session. We're diving all into Canva. Melissa, so make sure you stay tuned for our next session. I think you'll really enjoy it. Um, do I recommend making look like regular posts? It just, it depends, I guess, what your regular posts look like, right? Like, I, I'm not sure what your social feed looks like. However, uh, we'll be diving into it more in the next session. So we can, we can cover it more there. Um, let's see. Okay. So let me, I'm going to go ahead and Andy ask if you can 
Can you first open up uh, Asia's chat so that we can talk about the Home Health Agency? Sure. Yep. You just want me to give her the ability to, to speak? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Asia, you are on the air with Jenny. Hi, Asia. We can't hear you if you're speaking. It looks like you unmuted, but... Hey, Asia, we can't hear you. So I'll go ahead and move on to uh, Nicholas's question. But if, you, if you're able to get it working again, go ahead and just drop your comment again in the, in the questions and we'll get it answered. All right. All right. So Nicholas, uh, as you mentioned, not using you as targeting, what other words would you use in place? <laughs> um, AK, I just smiled. K is, K is, K is a longtime follower. Um, thanks for joining, Kay. Um, but Nicholas, what would I use instead of you? So like I said, um, I wouldn't use, here's the thing. You can use the word you. I would use it very sparingly. Additionally, I, what I would do, like I mentioned, is just flip flip it into a statement. Um, so Nicholas, remind me, what kind of people are you trying to target in your ads? I would say like mostly businesses and Peter. families. It's for food. Yes. Right. Yep, yep. Thank you for the reminder. Um, so okay. I would just yeah. say, um, here's the thing. So for catering, I would not be as worried about for catering because, you know, an ad, I can tell you an ad, I would be very surprised if it got flagged to say like, you know, you really want to make these moments as magical as they can for your friends and family, blah, blah, blah. I don't think that would get flagged. Okay. It would be more like personal attributes that I don't want called out via you, but let me get my creative thinking cap on. So how about, uh, how about something like it's time? How about for maybe the mother who has an upcoming event and she doesn't want the stress of cooking? So what about a message instead of being like, you know, you don't want to have to go through the hassle of cooking instead being like, we take away the hassle of cooking. Let us bring the party to you. Again, you, that verse, that form of you won't get you flagged. Uh, but, okay. you know, again, making it a statement about your company and like, right. again, we're, we'll take the stress away. Uh, and you don't have to say you, right? Like we just, we take the stress of cooking away. Right. Okay. Yeah. I like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay. So Melissa said that she tried a Facebook boost for the first time with the nonprofit she works for. This was flagged for discriminatory practices after, uh, yeah. So Melissa, this all, it, it all depends what the content of the actual post was. Uh, do you want to, do you want to go ahead? Andy, would you let Melissa come on here? Yeah, you bet. Give me one moment. All righty, oh. Melissa, go ahead. Hi, this is Melissa. Thanks so much. Um, so the post was talking about recruiting people to join an advisory sure. committee. Yes. And I'm not sure what in there would have been <laughs> discriminatory language. Um, yeah. Yep, I see. So this is the post right here. So would you like to help Dane County become a national leader in civilian climate court efforts? Okay. So uh, what would have gotten it flagged simply would have been the fact that I have a feeling it's because they consider it to be like a job. And the sorry, so job, jobs and housing that all falls under a special ad court category. I've never tried boosting, but I could bet you a few dollars that it's probably because they think of it as a job and they probably need you to verify your identity before you can go ahead and do that. And if you remember from one of my earlier sessions today, um, I think it might've even been the first session I went ahead and showed where you have to like mark that it's a special category, that it's like an employment category, even though, you know, it's, uh, yeah, even though it might not be specifically like a job per se. Is this, well, is this volunteer or is it? Yeah, it would be volunteer. Yeah, they're still they're they're identifying it as being something that's um, probably falling in their employment category, and then okay. additionally, it would also. Oh, okay. So you said you complained to Facebook in a direct message, and they changed their mind. Just seemed like a really weird thing for them to flag. Like, yeah. So that's this is something to note that every single ad you submit, it's reviewed by an actual human uh, within Facebook. Sometimes I, so let me, let me share with you guys that I have stuff that gets flagged inappropriately all the time. And it makes me laugh. Actually, a lot of people get really discouraged by it. I sometimes find it funny. Like I have the mother baby brand I've been sharing all day. Uh, their stuff gets flagged all the time. They say for like 
content related to alcohol. And I'm like, we're literally advertising a blanket. Mm -hmm. Like, like, and so anyway, sometimes they are flagged inappropriately. So this one, it, and it's all subjective, right? Like if the person read it and they made it just quick glance, they might have a thousand ads that they need to personally review in a day. They might've just, you know, flagged it like, oh, sounds like employment. They didn't mark as employment. And so just note that, uh, in the future, though, what I would do is even if you are recruiting, whether it's volunteer or paid, I would run it through Ads Manager. I'd promote the post through Ads Manager, and I would just make sure to mark it as uh, employment, and then it shouldn't get flagged in the future. And then also just make sure, too, that your targeting isn't just targeting men or women. It needs to be um, very, very broad targeting. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Okay, great. So Asia, sounds like she is back. Um, Asia, let's go ahead and chat through this. So you said you have a home health agency. You need to make yourself known and would like to know what would be the best ad to get clients. Um, so can you tell me a little bit more about your home health agency? We're still not hearing you, Asia, just a heads up. Oh, hang on. I think I might have, uh, I think, hang on. Let's try. Oh, there. I can well I'll see you in a second one. one. Right now too. Hello, can you hear me? Hi, hey. yes, I can. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hello. I am sorry. I had to connect oh, no. um to my cell phone. Um yes, I have a home health agency and we are targeting um mothers with postpartum depression. And uh, since we are kind of a holistic agency, we are oh, no. oh. I lost you, Asia. Can you hear me? I can, yes. Okay, so you said that you, uh, you're you looking to reach, did you say postpartum women? Yes, we are a holistic okay. home health agency. Okay, okay, great. So you're wondering what the best way is to get in front of new potential clients, right? That is correct. That is great, correct. and what what city are you based out of? Um, based off um, Largo, Florida. Okay, great, great. Um, and I'm not familiar with Largo uh, big cities, it's, it's not a big city. It's like in the Tampa Bay area. Um, okay. It's, it's yeah. Not, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big county, yes, but um, not, as, not, not as the other, not as a Broward County in Florida. So there are other counties that are bigger than the county that I am at. Sure, sure. But you said you, you'll pull from the Tampa area? That is correct. Okay, More great. Yeah. What I would recommend doing... There are a couple different approaches that come to mind. Uh, this is a very, obviously a very sensitive, uh, it's, it's a sensitive ad topic, but I think you can go about it in a very strategic and helpful way. What I would work on doing for your agency is developing some sort of free resource for these new mothers. And you might already have the perfect resources in mind, but what I would, what I would recommend is have some sort of free resource, whether it's, you know, the, top three ways that you can ask for help. And again, you have to be careful with the word you, but I'm just, I'm just spitting ideas out here, but the top three ways you can ask for help as a new mother or uh, the most helpful, like maybe it's a blog post of like the most helpful things that anybody has ever done for me as a, a mother, or, you know, just, just, I, I'm just trying to think of what is that foot in the door and kind of to like piggyback off of what Shannon was uh, Shannon's session earlier today is figuring out what free value can you provide to these new mothers that are in need how can we get them to join our email list with that and then support them with emails, asking them to, uh, you know, like book you guys for, for your services, whatever they might be. But I would, yeah, I'd look, focus really heavily on what that free resource is for these mothers. Okay. Um, and then uh, I don't have uh, any, I don't even have an email list, so I don't even know how to go about. I'm new to the social media marketing and that's why mm -hmm. I'm here today. And I just yeah. want to know you know, what would it be the best way for me to go about um, getting ourselves, getting a present in the um, online community and to reach out client? Yeah, yeah. I My strong recommendation for you is to start with organic social media. If you're brand new to this, I would not put any, and this is kind of a, a good message for everyone here, is that I wouldn't put any money behind something that you haven't proven already organically on social. So Asia, it's a, it's a bit of a different, it's a different beast than what we're talking about here today, because I'm proposing that you just have a really solid Facebook and Instagram strategy and ads is really to support the momentum that you have going organically on those platforms. 
Um, I would also highly recommend if you, did you have a chance to attend Shannon's session earlier today? Uh, yes, the, the email section, yes. Yep, yep, I think that that would be, so again, it's it's kind of like, it's it's a twofold strategy. I would recommend getting your organic social media presence going, and then I would also figure out what those free resources are that you wanna provide to those mothers and get them to join your email list. And once you know that that's the exact resource that they want, that is the time to go ahead and put money behind it uh, with paid ads. Okay. Okay. Thank you, that makes sense. <sighs> yeah, you're welcome. All right, let's see, what else you guys, we still have a bit more time. Oh, and you know what, actually, let me, I'm gonna go ahead and pull open the notes. Um, we have a woman named Chelsea Joe who emailed me. And uh, let's see, I'm going to run through her ad copy with you guys in real time, just so you can kind of see how I go about auditing this uh, and what this process looks like. So first, I wanna pull open uh, her website. So she had sent me some ad copy to proof and I said, hey, this looks great. But I also wanna see your website because again, like I mentioned, uh, one of the most important things that we should be doing is making sure our ads, the copy, the ad copy itself. So what we're physically writing lines up with what is happening on the website. So Chelsea Joe, she went ahead, she sent over to me this uh, webpage for a free workshop. So this is a phenomenal example, you guys, of. What is that free value you want to provide? And then how can we support them via email and ads to get them to purchase? So she sent this to me and um, you guys are looking at it in real time with me as I'm kind of seeing it for the first time. So it says free workshop for just for work from home moms. So these are our mothers at home trying to earn money and will be there for their kids. So how to successfully manage your home and business without feeling pulled in all directions. So people enter in a name, email address, they get access to this workshop. It says, after this workshop, you'll be able to find time to run a successful business while being a mom and wife. Do the number one thing to stop feeling pulled in all directions. Be productive by using time blocks instead of a schedule. So again, name, email address, save your seat. So that is pretty straightforward as to what she wants people to do. Now, I want to show you the ad copy that she sent over. All right. Just pulling it open on my other screen. So when she sent this over to me, uh, something that I responded to her with is that her ad copy looked really solid. I do have some critiques that we're going to run through here in real time, but uh, I wanted to know from her again, I said, let us dive into the personas because I said, there's, there's all different kinds of work from home moms, right? Like there might be the part-time mom who's working 20 hours a week and she's with her kiddos. There might be the mom who feels like she's killing it at work, but she doesn't feel like she's giving her kids the attention they need. Whole other persona would be the opposite side of the coin where you know, there is the mom who is giving her kids all the attention. She's, she's able to be the mother she wants to be, but her work is really suffering uh, during this time. So anyway, uh, so that's a perfect example of diving into what all of those different personas are. Um, now, let's go ahead and run through the ad copy that she sent over. I, what I love about what Chelsea sent me to preview is that she has long form copy, and then she also has short form copy, copy, excuse me. Uh, I'm going to start with a short form copy. It looks kind of funky here, you guys. It was in a nice like uh, email, but anyway, for her privacy's sake, I just copied it over into my note here. So just note that the, the spacing is off simply because uh, it's no longer in an email. So for her short form copy, um, I'm going to, this is a note and that I will go through in a moment. Um, but this is what she sent over to me that she had created already. She said, quote, I'm doing really well with work, but I feel like a bad mom. And then she's got like a grumbling face emoji. Then she said, I feel like a great mom, but I'm getting nothing done with work. I never have enough time to keep up with the house and I'm drowning in all the things. Sound familiar? There's an easier way I can help. With a few proven systems that were built for work for, from home moms, you can finally have time to run a successful business and be a present mom without feeling pulled in all directions. Join my free workshop if you want to keep up on the house, spend time with your family, have time to work without distractions, find routines and a balance that works for you. Grab your pen and paper, ladies. It's time to dive in. This is very, very well written copy. I definitely have a couple critiques to it, but it's it's very well written. You guys can see clearly here. She included, you know how I said that, uh, you know, it's, it's good to include either the quotes or testimonials. Uh, and this really hits at the pain points of all the different kinds of mothers 
that she thinks she will be reaching. So the person who's doing well at work, bad mom, great mom, bad at work. <laughs> I don't have enough time for all of the things. Uh, one thing that jumped out at me that I want Chelsea to think about is she said down here, um, these systems are built for moms so that they can have time to run a successful business. My thought was, are we not being inclusive enough? What about the moms that maybe like I'm thinking, especially during these pandemic times, most all of us are working remotely. So maybe this wouldn't resonate with the mother who's working 40 hours a week for a corporate job. They're not looking to run a successful business. So Chelsea, my kind of like little push to you would be to think about how can we reword this so that it's not just you know, moms who want a successful business, but like, you know, how can we finally have time to get done all of your work responsibilities that need to get done during the day or something like that? Successful business. I just don't want to rule out people who might see this ad because Chelsea, I think I, I know you, and I'm assuming you primarily work with um, entrepreneurs, people who have their own businesses, but I think there's a great opportunity to look into, do we need to be reaching mothers who work for someone else, maybe not necessarily themselves? Um, one other thing to note is we did have some views here. Let's see. Chelsea, I do also want us to be careful with join my free, free workshop if you want to. I don't want to, Facebook sometimes gets picky for promising things. So instead of if you want to, I would say join my free workshop to, to learn how to dot, 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 keep up on the house, spend time with your family, have time for work without distractions and fine routines and a balance. I would also take out the word you here too, again, just to just to avoid it potentially getting flagged. Uh, but otherwise, looks awesome. Uh, all right, so you can see, so she has a short form copy here, and she can also test out this longer form as well. Uh, yeah, we've got time. We'll quickly, quickly run through this, and then I see we've got a couple of questions here. Her long copy said, struggling to figure out how and when to do all the things as a work from home mom. Uh, this is an example of not using the word you. That's perfect. So it's just struggling to figure out how and when. It's not saying, are you struggling? So that's great that she did that. Uh, so if you've tried over and over to build a perfect schedule just to have it all go to the waste the next day, I can help. Let's dive into how to run a successful home and business so you can finally say, we'll move on. So. Uh, Maybe Chelsea, re you reword this and say the perfect schedule doesn't exist or like, you know, unpopular opinion. The perfect schedule doesn't exist. Uh, but maybe let them know that what does exist. So maybe maybe you talk about how it's a system. I'm not sure how you talk about what you're talking about in your workshop, but talking about maybe, you know, a system is truly uh, what's needed or something like that. So so you can finally say, yes, I'm doing my very best work in every area of my life, saving time, being more productive and present. My name is Chelsea Joe, and I work. I help work from home moms stop feeling pulled in all directions. I teach systems. So I teach systems to help mothers succeed in home and business. Notice how I took out the word you. And Chelsea, I'm always, I'm, I'm very conservative with taking out you wherever I can simply because the more times your ads get flagged, uh, the more sensitive Facebook is to continuing to flag it. And I just don't want any like shutdown of your account. I, I'm not overly concerned at all, but just so you know, I played on the conservative end. All right, and we're, I'm running through this. So it says, these systems were built for the woman who is trying to find enough time to get dinner on the table, wash and put away piles of laundry, make money from home. Oh, I did see this one, make money from home. I This felt a little MLM to me. And so just to, I don't know, maybe maybe we can reword that. Like, um, continue. Working, I don't know, I, I'll leave that to you to kind of think through how you want to reword that, but just make money from home. Uh, Facebook does not allow ads for MLM. So I just, again, don't want that to get flagged. Be present with her kids, keep the clutter at bay, stay connected to her husband, get enough sleep and use less direction. So cute. There is enough time to get it all done and you don't have to feel overwhelmed trying to make it happen. I have a free workshop and then she dives into it. Okay, Chelsea, only other thing that I am recommending for you is I want to know the title of your free workshop. Uh, this is something, Chelsea, just so you guys know, later today when we are running over graphics and landing pages, Chelsea also sent over her graphics that accompany this. I'll show that to you guys in a little bit when we chat through Canva. Um, but Chelsea, I want to know the name of your workshop. Join me for my workshop, the how to successfully manage your home and business workshop or whatever it might be. Let them know. And I want that changed here on your landing page and in your graphics and in your ad copy as well. So anyway, I hope that was helpful, Chelsea.
All right. Okay, great. So Amanda has an awesome question. Can you clarify personas within audience? Is that further segmenting within your target audience? Using your example, I assume audience is moms, and then you pulled personas from within the mom group. Yes, we can run through this. All right. So um, when I am talking about personas, the way that I'm breaking it down is like this. Let me just go ahead and, and show you what this looks like set up from the actual beginning here. Facebook is being slow for me here. Well, Amanda, while oh, that's pulling open, here it is. Uh, while this is pulling open, you can have, so for example, Blossom and Pear, I've been talking to you guys about them all day today. So for Blossom and Pear, I have a new mom's audience. Who am I targeting? Mothers with kiddos ages zero through one-year-old. So that's it. That, like I have I, several different audiences for them, but that's one of them. Literally just targeting new mothers. They're in Australia and the United States. Those are the two countries that they uh, ship to. So that's all I'm doing at the ad set level. Then at the ad level is where I'm like persona one, the tired mom, persona two, the sentimental mom, persona three, uh, the like, I need my house and everything to be clean mom. So, so just so you know, uh, all of that persona breakdown that actually happens at the ad level. I'm just making sure I'm answering your question. So using your example, I assume audience is moms and then you pull personas. Yeah, exactly. So the personas, those are set up all at the ad level. So it'd be, you know, the persona, I would sometimes even label out like add one, semicolon, uh, you know, this mom, and then add two, this mom, add three, this mom. So then I really like narrowing down exactly which type of mother it is. And then we can get split testing all the other fun things after that. So let's say I figured out that the tired mom uh, is the type of mom that works best for this client. Well, then I can do the tired mom with short form copy, the tired mom with long form copy. So you can see kind of how the, the testing progresses. I would say start with first which persona, which angle, we can call it an angle, which angle is working best. And then you can go ahead and split test all of the other things that you want to do. Like if you wanted to do image versus video, short versus long copy, uh, you know, a graphic with a blue background versus a graphic with a yellow background. And we're, we're diving into graphics on our next session, but. Okay. Uh, I mentioned something about Apple early this morning with with ads, yes. So what I'd recommend is make sure you are taking a look at the replay that we have available on the website. Uh, we talked all about uh, Apple this morning, their iOS 14 updates, and uh, you can go ahead and watch that replay to, to dive into it. But essentially iOS 14 rolled out last year, which greatly affects who we can and can't target. All right, you guys. So we still have a couple more minutes. Do we have any last quick question uh, before I turn this on over to Andy? And I guess I'll do a quick little preview while I'm waiting for anything to come through. So the rest of our afternoon here. So our we just went over audience targeting and ad copy. Uh, we are then going to have just a little bit of a little break. Come back in 15 minutes to talk about graphics and landing pages. So this is where we're diving into Canva showing you guys all of the different capabilities that you have there to create just beautiful, really aesthetically pleasing graphics. And we're gonna chat through landing pages as well. As well. Uh, that's making sure that the website that you have has all of the elements you need, none of the elements you don't need. And then our very last session for the day, very excited about this. This is probably like, like this contains most of the FAQs that I get is regarding determining your return on ad spend. So how much are you putting in? How much are you getting out? At the end of the day, it's very important to us as business owners. So our last session of the day is diving into what your return is on your ads, how to optimize ads and uh, know what metrics you should be paying attention to. So. So it looks like those are all the questions that have come in for right now. Again, Jenny will be back here if there is anything that, that comes up. Um, but yeah, we will go ahead and cap that session here. We've got uh, a little bit of a break. So we will reconvene at uh, 2.45, again, for effective graphics and landing pages. So go ahead, uh, gear up, fill up your water jug, uh, grab what you need to grab, and we will see you folks back here shortly.